Here I'm showing two phase diagrams. What types of phase diagram? Two binary phase diagrams. Okay. One is between copper and silver. The other one is between copper and nickel. Both are metallic alloy types of phase diagram. The one on the left, people call it uh, binary eutectic phase diagram because that's the lowest uh, melting temperature in between. Make sense? This is single phase liquid. This is single phase silver, right? With almost pure silver with a little bit of copper dissolved uniformly in it. This is single phase solid copper with a little bit of silver dissolved in it. This is two phase region between liquid and the solid copper. This is two phase region between liquid and the solid silver. This would be the two phase region between solid silver and solid copper. Make sense? That's how we understand this phase diagram. Limited mutual solubility. Does that make sense? Limited mutual solubility. That is indicated by the solubility. At let's say 600 degrees C, what's the solubility of copper in silver? Look at the phase diagram. At 600 degrees C, what's the solubility of copper in silver? Roughly, well, three to five percent mass. Make sense? At 600 degrees C, what's the solubility of silver in copper? Similar, around three percent, roughly. Make sense? Of silver in copper. Limited mutual solubility. Okay, and uh, for these, we typically, when we go from one phase, single alpha, into alpha plus beta, the precipitation typically occurs while what we have discussed before, nucleation and the growth process. Nucleation means you form a local cluster, which is very different in its composition and structure, or at least the lattice parameter from the matrix. There is a distinct interface in the process even from the beginning okay and then after that is growth of that precipitate but then in comparison look at the one on the right hand side we have a binary phase diagram between copper and nickel okay copper on the left nickel on the right Nickel on the right, okay? And then in between, a uh, higher temperature is what? L4 liquid. But uh, in between the intermediate temperature, I have this bracket, copper, comma, nickel, within bracket. That means single phase continuous solid solution. It's solid, but what? Copper and the nickel? They would mix randomly at the lattice. What type of lattice? FCC crystal structure lattice. At any lattice location, you can have certain probability of finding copper, certain probability of finding nickel, depending on your specific composition. Make sense? Put it that way. If I'm here at 1000 degrees C, what does that mean? Or 1000 K? That means at the lattice side, I have 40% probability of finding nickel and 60% of probability of finding that side to be copper. Make sense? Random, but uniform. But then this phase diagram, what you noticed is below a certain critical temperature, we call it roughly 606K, I have another line. And this is what people call miscibility gap. This also happens for polymers for certain system. And what happens is below this temperature, under equilibrium condition, I would have single phase or two phase. No, it's actually two phase. One phase would be 
determined by the Thai line. Almost pure what? Copper. The other face is almost pure what? Nickel. If I'm here under equilibrium condition, I would have almost pure copper and almost pure nickel together, mixed. Make sense? They would have be something like this, mixed. Two phase region. This is a phase diagram that we call continuous solid solution above T thin. Continuous. If we are above 606K, it's continuous, going from one side to the other side. It's all uniform, indistinguishable. But below it, we have two phases, miscibility cap. And spinodal decomposition, the types of phase transformation that does not involve the creation of a distinct interface may occur within certain composition range which is actually the dashed line. They would have so-called spinodal decomposition. Let's look at it uh, a little bit in. Copper versus nickel, that's what we said, versus copper versus other metal. What you learn in material engineering introduction is a concept called hume rosary rule. Essentially, it says metal Different metal would have different solubility of each other depending on how similar the metals would be to each other. For example, here I give the table that lists the different uh, metallic elements together with their atom radius, together with their crystal structure, together with their Electronegativity, which is how strongly they like their own electron, valence electron, together with their valence. And I'm highlighting a few elements. One is our copper in black, okay? FCC structure, electronegativity 1.9, and the valence of plus 2. Now let's pick some examples. Do you use, let's pick nickel, okay? For copper elements that we chose, we Look at the previous diagram. We said it forms a continuous solid solution above certain temperature with nickel. So nickel is here. Between copper and nickel, between the black here, nickel, blue, the atom radius are very what? Atom sides are very close to each other. Do you see that? 0 0.1278, 0 0.1246, hmm, pretty close. The lattice structure are both FCC structure. The electronegativity are 1.9 versus 1.8, very, very close. The stable valence state for copper, plus two, for nickel, also plus two, which means fundamentally these two elements are really, really what? Similar to each other, and not surprisingly, they would have a tendency to form a good solid solution with high solubility of each other. And in fact, in this case, so-called continuous solid solution, which is if I'm going to give an analogy between water and alcohol, between water and acidic acid. Make sense? Because these would be very, very similar in their properties, in their behavior and they form continuous solid solution. Just like when you mix water with ethanol. Continuous, you cannot, at certain concentration, they started to separate. Make sense? On the other hand, for other metals, quite often we would only have limited solubility with other metals for copper. For example, for silver or aluminum. Silver is here, aluminum is here. Compared with copper, they are what? Larger. How much larger? 0.14 something versus 0.12 something. Quite often people say larger than 15% relative, they are pretty large difference. Of course, you may say, Dr. Chen, we are, we are talking about only 0.02 nanometer, not big. But relatively speaking, they are already more than 10%, pretty large for atom to fit. Okay. For some other elements, such as CO for cobalt, 
Cl for chromium, Fe for iron. These three, the sizes are relatively similar to copper, but what happens? They don't have high mutual solubility with copper because they have what? Different, completely different crystal structure. Make sense? They have very different crystal structure. They bond very differently from copper. And also their electronegativity well depends. But the primary one is they tr they tend to organize in a different way as copper. As a result, these metals do not have high solu mutual solubility with what? Copper. And then let's go one step. Palladium PD is also too big. Make sense? 0.13 something versus 0.12, even though it's FCC. And for zinc, it's also big and also different what? Structure. As a result, zinc has a limited solubility, not continuous solid solubility with copper. So these are the kind of what we refresh our mind. Why we have these different types of phase diagram between copper and other metals? Because if the elements are very similar to each other, they tend to form high solubility or continuous solubility with each other. If atoms are very different, they have limited solubility, which is the same case as we say, okay, between water and oil, they are very different. So water and oil, they don't really mix. Between water and ethanol, they are similar so they have high solubility. Between water and the butanol, how many carbon does butanol have? Butanol actually have four carbon. It's longer and organized more like a oil. So water and the butanol, they have limited solubility to each other versus water and, and ethanol. Make sense? So that's kind of what we see the similar behavior between solid or between organic polymer mat organic material.